what is going on welcome to la vida rosa i'm your host pinky and today we will be talking about married at first sight so if you'd like to see more then just stay tuned don't forget to check out my website la vida rosa style where you can find cute accessories like the ones i'm wearing right now like comment and subscribe and without further ado let's get into this video y'all so <laughs> I was speechless by the end of this episode like I'm just gonna go ahead and get the get get the other couples out of the way so we can get to why we're all really here Austin and Jessica they are perfect like they're good their scenes are very sweet and it's a nice little balance to what's going on they're pretty much the only ones to root for by default, like we love Jessica and Austin because they are functioning the best. What else can I say? Now them making out was a little bit, ugh. but that's y'all love. I ain't gonna take away from y'all love. You know what I'm saying? Um. Anyway, let's move on. Katie and Derek cannot cook. <laughs> And I'm not saying that as somebody that can cook well, but I feel like as an adult, there are certain things like the bare minimum basics that you should be able to do. I think frying an egg is one. Basically breakfast foods in general, like that should be your bare minimum, you know, pancakes, omelets, um, bacon, sausage. I mean, that's like really beginners cooking like really really easy to make you know what i'm saying you can follow directions whatever you need to do to make breakfast food but it's the easiest so if you can't fry an egg i'm a little concerned for you as an adult um <laughs> i mean literally they always make macaroni and cheese because that is the only thing they can make and not even the good macaroni and cheese. The macaroni and cheese out of the box. So I'm like, um, yeah, y'all need to do better. Y'all did need a cooking class, but y'all need like to go to cooking class every week. It reminds me of Keith from a couple of seasons ago. Keith and Christine. And he went to cooking classes to learn how to cook for her. I think they genuinely need to go to a regular cooking class because y'all should be able to do more. It's making me look at myself like, Pinky, you should be able to do better yourself. But... Compared to them, I'm an A1 chef, okay? Um, Because I don't know what that was in that dish. I was about to... What is it? What is it that you are trying to make? Because I don't know what that is in that pot. And then also, there's hamburger helper. You can learn how to make spaghetti. Like, there's so many things that are easy, easy to learn how to make that you should already have in your arsenal. Okay. And, and not to mention recipes online. Okay, I'm moving on. 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 Mindy and Zach. So finally, one of the experts have come in and really held Zach's feet to the fire. I really love it when they bring in before video of before they met their partner, before they got married, you know, maybe when they were getting casted into this process and they bring in like how hard you were fighting to be picked and the things that you said and one of the things that zach said before he was married to mindy is that he would fight hard for the relationship no matter if he was attracted to the woman or not and i was just like mm -hmm. i'm glad they brought back the receipts baby because we needed somebody to come in a whole his feet to the fire. Dr. Pepper was not having him not staying with Mindy in the house. Like you literally took all of you away from her. You're not giving her one thing, not even living with her. Dr. Pepper was like, I've never seen anything like this in all of the years of doing this show. Honestly, we've never seen it either, Dr. Pepper. Like, I didn't even think it was allowed that you could not move in with your partner. I thought that was like clearly... A part of it but then again who would think they could not move in they need to make it a hard fast and rule next season you are not allowed to not stay with your partner are you crazy and if so you will be immediately ejected from the experiment because what is the point what is the point you are a husband and wife in name only you're not actually participating if you don't live together she says zach is only worried about his own feelings and she strongly 
she said he needs to strongly consider moving in or you need to leave her. And I just, I feel like that should have been like, move in or get out. I know that can't be that harsh, but I think that's what that needed to be. I'm kind of curious as to what this issue between him and Mindy is going to be for next week because I saw the previews. And if any one of Mindy's friends that has confronted Zach about not being a good husband, if either one of those women were the one texting Zach or talking to him behind her back, that is trifling and I hope she immediately cuts them off because that is not a good friend, especially the one that um is married. I hope she wasn't doing that. So we'll see. We'll see. I cannot wait until next week because I need to see what this little controversy was. And then at the end of this episode, they did some sort of exercise where they're, you know, getting real close and intimate with each other. And obviously, Mindy is the only one that's into it. And he's like looking off into the distance like, <gasps> she makes me feel dead inside. Leave it in the comments who said that. <laughs> One of our favorites from the past. So let's move on to Brandon and Taylor. <sighs> draining, 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 draining. My whole explanation from last week that I wasn't sure of, I am really, really starting to believe is true. I believe Taylor came on this show to be on TV and to build her following. Um, she was supposed to be on another reality show. I kept saying the wrong name, so I ain't gonna try again. But she was supposed to be on another love reality show. Brandon just happened to be a live wire. He just happened to be someone who is volatile. So she actually got a chance to be the victim. She got a chance to put on her acting skills. She got a chance to be, you know, to really play up this role to be memorable, right? And it just seemed to play out more and more in this episode. When they sat down with Dr. Pepper, it was over, okay? It was over, it was done because she was not remorseful whatsoever for that video. And she kept trying to put it back on him for the things that he's done in the past. Yes, that's valid, that's valid, but he's apologized and you said yourself you wanted to move past it. So why are you continuing this drama? It seems like you're pushing this drama because you want to have a moment. You know what I'm saying? And Brandon looks like he's very aware of that. And he even called her out for it. And she didn't really address it. If I'm not mistaken, she didn't really deny it. And then on top of that, these tears, girl, this crying, these tears, um, Oscar winning performance. But all I could focus on was that wig. See, I was never going to bring up the wig. I hate to bring up the wig, especially we've all been there with bad wigs. I've had plenty of bad wigs myself. I just been going through a lot of my old pictures trying to do like this collage and my wigs have been terrible as well. Is she trying to give a disheveled look so we feel sorry for her even more? I don't know, but it's just more and more noticeable. I had to address it because it was it's just not laying down. <laughs> at all that wig is not laying down but i'll give brandon this at least he hasn't called it out because carlton from love is blind did not hesitate pretty much brandon feels like the video was malicious because she obviously doesn't feel any sort of remorse and she tries to act dumb like well i didn't mean it like that i didn't think you would see it. i didn't think your friends would see it i didn't think this and then he says she was acting like a single woman and coming home and men calling her at three o'clock in the morning um that's a little suspicious so by the end of it brandon was basically like he does not want to work it out because of her lack of remorse he's over it he didn't feel like she had a good explanation so he's done it was funny because his laugh kind of creeped me out a little bit though he was like ha, ha, i'm done i was like okay brandon you i want to be there with you but that kind of scared me a little bit um and then she started crying and going off about the whole situation. And it just didn't come off as genuine. It came off as like, you know, Lifetime Movie Network. I mean, we are on Lifetime, so maybe she's auditioning for a role. I don't know. But it just didn't come off as genuine. Yeah, the tears were rolling, but I wasn't really feeling it. So later on, she went and met up with her friends. And she told them about the whole situation. They took her side. They felt like he was playing victim and not used to a strong woman or whatever. And they already trying to hook up and they already are trying to hook her up with someone else. Real friends will tell you when you're wrong. 
and the fact that her friend maybe they didn't see the video so that maybe they don't know no one of them did see and she didn't see a problem with it i don't know her friends were kind of justifying her bad behavior with his behavior before the same thing she does and um yeah it was just I don't know they were just automatically on her side without trying to see both sides and then brandon went to go meet up with one of his friends and he was just saying how she had texted him and she wants to meet up with him after like basically cursing him out in a very long lengthy text message now you want to meet up and it just seems like taylor wants her camera time mika and michael michael I'm not even finna go through all of what happened this episode detail by detail because I've had it. I've had it because I've been sitting up here trying to give Michael the benefit of the doubt. I've been trying to maybe, you know, with the whole situation of him giving her an ultimatum on their honeymoon of, you know, consummating their marriage before they leave or he done with the marriage. Um, I always believed he said it because of how convicted Mika was whenever she told the story. I believed her the whole time, but I believed that he didn't mean to come off the way that he did, right? Um, when it came to the whole job thing, my cousin, you know, she broke it down for me and explained it to where it could make a little bit more sense because I didn't get it then either and I just thought he was probably lying about it. But, you know, once again, gave him a bit, the benefit of the doubt. I just really didn't want this to be the case. Like, I wanted Michael to be misunderstood, a bad communicator, because those things can be worked on. But a liar? A liar? That's something, how are we supposed to get past this? Michael did a lot of gaslighting this episode. Um, Mika has been expressing her frustrations towards him. She's been laying her feelings out on the table, whether you think it's in an angry or bratty way. Um, she's been very forthcoming about how she felt about every single thing, right? She's put it all out on the table and she's always confronted him with it. She's never said anything behind his back. She's always said it to him. And yeah, if she wanna discuss it with her friends, why? Why can't she not discuss it with her friends and your story stay not adding up? Why not? Why can't she be expressive when she talks? Because that's just, some people talk with our hands, okay? And we have to get our feelings across this way, okay? And, and you just find any little thing on her to nitpick because you know you did wrong. So that's how I feel about their first argument, right? That's that's all I got from that. Um, then, in order to make up for this argument that they had, he invites her to go to his yoga studio because apparently... He teaches there three times a week or maybe once a month. The story's been flipping back and forth. We don't know. She goes there because he invites her there. She don't just show up trying to catch him or, you know, surprise him. He invited her there. She gets there. Not only is he not there, but when she asks the owner or whoever, is there a Michael that works here? Only one that be cleaning up the rooms. Not teaching cleaning up the rooms so this is yet another lie he has been caught in right when she confronts him about they go out to eat she confronts him about it once again he tries to flip it around on her well you you said it was a waste of your time and that bothered me. it was a waste of her time one you were not even there two you don't even work there in the capacity that you said you did. You straight up lied. You lied. He never, admit, he never, in that moment, he never denied lying. He was just upset with how she reacted. Well, how do you expect somebody to react to lying? Mind you, while they're at dinner, he's like casually eating while she's confronting him about lying. He would have been wearing every single last piece of food on that table would be all over he would be wearing every single drop because ain't no way you finna just sit here and be casually eating and nourishing your body while i'm upset and trying to confront you about your lies next thing you know 
we talking with Dr. Pepper. The lies come up. Obviously, that's the biggest, that's their biggest problem. That's their biggest issue is his dishonesty. She said, the doctor asked Mika, what do he be lying about? This man lies about the gas mileage in his car. What? Michael, you can't be honest about the gas mileage in your car. If we can't be honest about the smallest little frivolous things in our lives, how can I trust you with anything? He lied about gas mileage, going on trips, and being a yoga instructor. And possibly even being offered the job of being a principal. Like, how do we know that will look... How do we know that was legitimate at all? You lie about anything. And usually when people are like a pathological liar, they lie about everything no matter what. They usually lie to the very end. I know one. I had a roommate that was one. And they will lie. Even if you bring up proof, they will find a way to wiggle out of there and not admit to lying. They will. I'm surprised he even admitted that he lied. He did. I was so shocked. I was so shocked that I did like a quick little live video because I was in shock. I could not believe he admitted to lying. Like, I, I'm still kind of speechless at this point. Like, you, you, what? And I'm just like, a, a part of me was angry, but a part of me just wants to know, like, wh why? Obviously, Michael has some serious psychological issues because he keeps because he, he blamed his lies on the fact that he's not comfortable with her and that he's been adopted and it's hard for him to trust people. He has a walls. I, bear with me. I can see that. Now, I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying he should do that. It, he needs help. What I'm saying is I could believe he said those things to try to impress her because she says she's wanted someone that is financially stable and makes the same or more than her and if he doesn't he probably said those things in order to feel like he was worthy um i i just feel like a lot of the lies that he told was to impress her and that's not a lie is not impressive whatsoever i mean it's a huge turn off i mean it could end the whole relationship it should it should end the whole relationship because these lies is just lies on lies on lies on lies and then you're not only that but you're trying to make Mika feel crazy when you have been lying. Like, I just, he tried to flip it on her every time. And a lot of people have been coming at Mika, like, you know. And it is kind of like, well, Mika, you you stay with him. So, you, you, you staying with a liar? Like, how can I take your side and you staying with the man? If you don't stay with the man, I'll be like, say whatever it is you need to say about him. But you sticking with him. So, what what is going on? Why is are they encouraged to be together still? How I, I I'm concerned about your safety, cause we don't know nothing about him. He he lied about everything. He lied to the experts. So uh, once again, I ask, what am I supposed to do with this now? Because just because you trust them, don't mean I do. <laughs> They did this whole blindfold challenge where they were asking each other questions with a blindfold on. I'm just like, y'all don't even need the blindfold. Y'all really look at each other in the eye. I mean, that is a sign of someone that's not being honest when they rarely look you in your eye. I think Michael needs help. There's some things he needs to work through before he can ever be in a relationship with someone else. Because I feel like he's not comfortable with who he is. And also severe mommy issues when he always talks about being adopted he's not come to terms with it. He's not okay with it. So yeah, I, I still have a piece of my heart that feels bad for Michael, but I just cannot believe this is the way this turned out. I cannot believe it. I'm, I'm can't even believe I was able to say anything. Cause I was like completely shocked and appalled by what I saw last night. Anyway, um, <laughs> Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Did you agree with me? Did you not agree with me? And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Peace.